30 years ago, a 150 to 1 outsider from Bradford turned up at the Crucible in Sheffield and shocked the world. With the World Championship just around the corner, Ronnie caught up with Joe Johnson to chat about that famous night. Joe, um, thanks for talking to us today. Um, I want to ask you about the 1986 World Championships. I was only 11 years of age then and I remember it really well. But can you talk me through what it was like going into that year's World Championships? Yeah. Well, it's a long time ago, isn't it, Ronnie? Mm. But um, the good thing is, if you have a lot of children, they always bring it up now and then. And it reminds me of what, what happened because it was a long time ago. Can you believe, though, that it was 30 years ago? It just, the time flies, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't need to tell you. I mean, it, it, it was two minutes since you'd won the UK Championship at mm. 17, I think it was. Yeah. And, you know, where's it gone? You know, it, you, you're 40 now and I'm nearly 45. So, you know, time flies. Going into that World Championships, though. You didn't pick up on that 45 bit, did you? <laughs> You're not 45. <laughs> That's why I expected you to say. I thought you were 21, Joe. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, I'm 18, like you're it. 21. Yeah. That's that. You're as old as you feel sometimes. That's right, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you say most of your game was based on clean potting, break building, scoring heavy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's when everybody's happy. All snooker players are happy when they break building. But I used to get enjoyment out of good safety, mm. especially playing players like Thorburn and Griffiths and Dennis Taylor. I mean, they really taught me the art of safety play, a little bit like you've got now. You've got a great safety game now. Mm. And I don't know if Ray Raiden helped you with that, but yeah. certainly playing great players like John Higgins and Mark Williams and um, Ken Dockett, you had to learn a, a, a different game. Going into that 1986 era of snooker, if you like, a lot of the players were we'll make 30, 40, play a lot of safety, yep. like you, you guys like Forburn, Griffiths, obviously make their hundreds, yeah, but yeah. the game's a lot different then to what it is now. Yeah. But would you see yourself more as a player that would fit into the modern game day to day than in that era? Would you, would you class yourself as an attacking player back in that day? Yeah, I, I probably would have done, but the problem back then is that if you didn't, if you didn't score heavy, as an attacking player, then they had the game to slow you down and, mm. and really make you think. And players like the, the slower players of that day really got to me mentally. Mm. And it, it was like they was always on top of me because they knew how to uh, frustrate me, if you like. Mm. And it affected my game. But every now and then, I had a good tournament and I'd get far in the tournament, but I never actually had the game like your game where you could really put them under pressure and score mm. heavy against them. Like you said, going back to every now and again, you got it right. Yeah. In 1986, you obviously got it right for 17 days. Not an yeah. easy thing to do. Yeah. Well, can you talk me through the first round match and how you were feeling going into that match? It was the first time I was in the top 16. So I'd never won a match at the Crucible. I think I'd played there five times, never won a match. I'd always qualified to play one of the top 16, which was difficult because they were all very, very good players. That year, it was the first time I was at Sheffield waiting for a qualifier. Mm. Unfortunately, it was somebody that I'd just beaten a few weeks previously. So I had a good first round match. But I looked at the draw and I was down to play Dennis Taylor if he won and he was defending champion. Mm. And I'd never beaten Dennis. In fact, he'd beaten me 10 1 at the Crucible a couple of years previously. So I, I wasn't looking forward to playing him. And then when Mike Hallett, my, my, my old pal, when he beat Dennis, I went, yes! Because I knew I'd got a good chance against uh, Mike. I, I wasn't sure I was going to beat him, but I knew it was going to be a good game because he played a similar type of game to me, attacking game. So, you know, I didn't want to play somebody who could stop me. Mm. And, and Dennis could have done. So it, it worked really well for me, that. I get the feeling by just talking to you today that if you've beaten a player, you fancy you're going to keep beating them. That's right, And yeah. if you haven't beaten a player, then sometimes you think... I ain't going to beat him. So you, yeah. you, you're kind of a bit of more of a, a belief type player, would you say, a confidence type player? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, mm. confidence, belief. You, you've yeah. hit the nail on the head there because Terry Griffiths, I'd never beaten Terry Griffiths up to playing him in the World Championship. I mean, he really gave me some good idings. Mm. He really did, you know what I mean? He, he beat me heavily in the English amateur final. He beat me heavily in, in the UK Championship. And I, I never really wanted to play Terry because he was just so studious but good with it. Mm. You know, you waited ages for your shot, and uh, w when you got your shot, you were on, you were on the top cushion, or, or you, were, you were in trouble. Or, he was a, a really, really good player. That's Can right. you talk me through that game? Because I know yeah. you was in front, and yeah. then he went in front, and then yeah. you kind of 
you know. That's right. Well, uh, after I'd beaten Hallett, I was on more money than I'd ever earned in my life. So you felt like you'd won already? I, absolutely. There was yeah. no pressure on me whatsoever because yeah. I'd earned the ranking points, which were going to keep me in the top... Well, move me up in the top 16. Mm. Uh, I'd got loads of cash. You know, I'm going to last for a year there, you know, and, and I, I knew I was going to win money. By being in the top 16, I knew I was going to start earning money. So it, there was no pressure on me whatsoever. So I mentally, I really mentally said to myself, right, I am not going to get involved in his game. I'm going to really attack him. I'm going to open the balls. I'm going to play off the third, you know, the third red and open the balls and make him play an attacking game. And as you say, I was in front all the way through that match at 9-7 and I, I went into the last session thinking, I've just got to keep playing that same way. Griffiths started playing unbelievable and he won five frames on the trot and I thought, here we go again. You know, and I don't know, I'll tell you what happened. He missed a green. He, he was in to win 13-9 and he had the green somewhere around about here and he missed the green pulling the cue ball back for all the reds. And I thought to myself, he can't win. You know, he's, he's, he's bottling it. Wow. And I thought, he can't. I'm, and, and he's only going to get in now if I miss. And I thought, I'm not going to miss. I am not going to miss. And I didn't miss. So the confidence of beating Griffiths in that kind of way, going into yeah. a semi-final against Nolsey, again, yeah. someone that you probably fancy... Well, I, I'd, I'd had good results against Tony. So, mm. you know, we'd, we'd known each other from being amateurs. We played hundreds of times. And, uh, you know, we'd beaten each other. And I knew that I had a chance with Tony. He played the same game as what I do. And... Um, well, I, I had no pressure in the quarterfinals because of the money. Imagine what it was like in the semi-finals. I, I was like a millionaire. It was fantastic. You know, I, I, I was made for life, if you like. You know, it was great. So what, what was the thing with the shoes? Who, <coughs> whose idea was it with the shoes? Because obviously that stole yeah. the show. As well as winning the World Championships. It, it, it was my wife, Terry. You know, she, uh, she, she said that you should have some new shoes for the, for the final. And we went out. There's, there's a little place around the back of the Crucible and... Uh, she picked these pink, red and white shoes. I've got them with me, as it happens. And she picked these shoes out. And I said, I can't wear, I can't wear them. I really can't wear them. But uh, anyway, she made me wear them. And yeah, I've been known as the shoe man ever since. Really? Yeah. So obviously, getting through Nosey, yeah. you're never going to play the Nugget six times. I don't know if he was six times. No, he wasn't. Was yeah. I think he was three, two or three. Two or yeah. three, yeah. yeah. And he just lost to Dennis the year yeah, before. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. again, going into that match and having spoken to you before, you was yeah. like, I, I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking, if I'm playing Steve Davis, I don't care how many times I beat him, yeah. I still think I'm going to be in for a, yeah, a monster of a match. Absolutely. But you, you I, didn't I, see it like that, did no, you? No, I did. I did see it like that, did you? actually. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But I, the last time I played him, I'd beaten him as an amateur. We'd never played yeah. as professionals. And the last time I played him, I'd beaten him, but it meant nothing because of his achievements mm. that he'd done in snooker. Mm. And all I thought to myself in that match is try and keep with him, you know, stay with him. And, you know, when you get your chances, forget who you're playing. And the good thing about the World Championship is that you can do that mm. because it's a one table setup. You've got a long way back to your seat. Mm. So you're not actually playing the guy. You're playing the table more. Yeah. You know, it, when, when it's all 43. tightly uh, seated and what have you, mm. it's more like you're playing the man. Mm. But in the World Championship, I, I just thought to myself, I'm playing the table, and, and I did, I played the table. And obviously, you said you'd played him before. Did you, got, did you, did you believe you was going to beat Davis in that final? Or did you uh, think, you know no, what, I'm I, happy I've made the final? Absolutely not. No, you didn't you believe can't, it, no? No, you can't. I, I, I so did, do you think that worked to your advantage, though? Probably because I, I didn't off. expect anything of myself. Mm. You know, I, I'd already achieved more than what I ever dreamed of. Going in with that frame one, how do you think that affected Steve Davis? Because obviously he's, he was used to people being beat before they started. You come yeah. along, yeah, yeah. you're bashing everyone up. Well, you cut, you're 150 to one outsider. Yeah. You've got the Larry shoes on. Yeah. You're having fun. <laughs> you, you've won the lottery, like you yeah, said. You got right. to the quarters and semis. Yeah. How was must, How do you think he? I mean, how do you think he dealt with coming up against someone like yourself? Well, I, I think during the match, he realised that I was enjoying myself. And I was, I was enjoying myself. Win or lose, I was enjoying myself. You know, I was, I was in front of my own crowd to have a think. Sheffield is only 30 miles from Bradford, and I, I was well supported in the South Yorkshire area, really well supported. So, you know, I was in front of my own crowd, I'd got all this cash, all these ranking points, and I was playing the best player who had ever lived at that time. And, I was enjoying it. Mm. You know, it was great. All eyes were on me and it was fantastic.
you have to sum it up as another player speaking to another player. I get the feeling that you're in the final session of the World Championship against Davis and you're feeling really relaxed. Absolutely, I was so yeah. relaxed. So you know. maybe that was the turning point, that you just thought, I'm in this massive yeah. pressurised situation <coughs> and I'm relaxed, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, I never thought of it as, as a pressurised situation because, mm -hmm. as I said, I'd got, I'd got the cash, I'd got the ranking points, I'd got the fame, you know, because all, all my friends from every walk of life was there. So, you know, it was, it was fantastic and I, I couldn't go anywhere afterwards, you know. It, it, without somebody congratulating me, it was fant absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. And what did it feel like, obviously, like the last frame, going through them last few balls, you kind of like, you got one frame to go, you get an opportunity, you have your few points in front, you need... Yeah. What was them, what was it, how did you feel then? Yeah, did the I, nerves I, kick in? Did I, you yeah, start? The, I, the nerves started to kick in, in in the last frame, that turned out to be the last frame, but I also knew that I had six or seven frames to go. But I started to think a little bit that, you know, I'm on the verge of winning it. And I did twitch it a couple of shots, i got to say, in that last frame. But then when it came down to it and I got a good chance, I just tried to stay still on the shot and mm -hmm. stay focused. And yeah. even, even when I potted the final balls, I didn't really believe that I'd won. No, no, because we're going to go through them in a minute, because I was on <laughs> YouTube last night and I thought, I've got to watch this again. And I watched the last few balls that you potted and then I watched the handshake with Davis. And I see Davis' reaction to you, and in some finals that he lost, he felt like that he would, shouldn't have really lost that match. But I get the impression from his reaction to you that he was beaten by the better man. Yeah, on the day. He didn't yeah. look that disappointed. No. Normally, no. When, Dave, yeah. when Davis lost in '85, you could see. I mean, yeah, and yeah. It, obviously the way he lost. Yeah. But it, it was got, ball, yeah. Oh, that must have felt good that you'd outplayed yeah. the master. Yeah. And, like. and we were good friends. You know, we sat down afterwards. You know, just the two of us and talked, and you know, he, he was genuinely yeah. pleased for me. So. You know, what a nice guy, you know, he's, he, at that time, he, he wasn't very well liked, but he had that same personality that we know him as now, mm. that he's always had that, he's yeah. he, just away from the table, he, 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 that's when he showed it, not on the table. Yeah, stick. Brilliant, well we all enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. And we're <laughs> now going to recreate some yeah. of the last balls that you potted, and yeah. I'm now even going to be putting the shoes on that you wore, the pink, <laughs> white and black ones, <laughs> so we're going to go with the full hog here. Yeah, um, okay. Joe, this is going to be good. Let's, let's get it done, yeah? Okay, let's do stuff. <laughs> Joe? You have. You I've got, have. I've got the didgeries on. <laughs> yeah. The pink ones, I've got yeah. these. All right, these are, these are the wow. magic shoes. 32 in front, last red on the table. You put the pink, held the spot. Now, how much have you been feeling? This well, to win the World Championship? Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of shot that you want to win the World Championship. I knew if I, I potted the red that he's going to need snookers. But even then, I thought to myself, I've got to make sure of the pink. Just make sure of the pink. Because, uh, you know, you, you never know what Davis is going to do. Right, so I'm going to pop this red here, yeah? Because you yep. don't want to do it. You've asked me to do it. Yep. So I'm gonna, we're going to recreate um, the crime of the scene, if you like. So you pop the red. Yep, Get nice finished. on the pink. He now yep. needs two free snookers. Well, the thing is that I could have played up for the yellow, but yeah. I wanted to make absolutely sure of the pink, okay. just to put that final nail in the coffin, if you like. Right, so here we go. We're going to knock the pink in. I'm going to try. In goes the pink. How are you feeling now? Well, now I, I know for certain that I've, I've won. And that is more or less exactly the yellow that I had, and I thought, well, I can't miss now from here because I'm world champion. <laughs> Seems like you couldn't miss for 17 days, Joe. <laughs> but I'm going to try and play exactly the same shot you played, which was a run through. Yep, lots of top on the cue ball. And it that's goes. just how it went in. You come Beautiful. about there on the green, didn't you? Yeah, and maybe a little bit thinner. You, you was a little bit more here. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I think it was something like something that. Something like that. And I remember thinking, was he going to get the black out? But you missed the black and yep. you nearly went in off in his pocket here. Is that that's right? That's right, that's right. So I'm playing his plain ball. Oh. Just, well, I'd have preferred to that, knock the black out as it has come out but better. I finished up round about there. But you left it about here, but by now you're, you, you know it's, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter, no. It's, I mean, it's not an easy shot, but you just kind of just, the, the pockets must look like buckets now. Don't that's they? right, they do. They yeah. do look like buckets and. I just couldn't wait to pot all the balls. We top this one in. Lovely, just like that. Come up for the blue. The table wasn't quite as fast as this one, and yeah. I, I finished round about there. 
Was it as, was it as narrow as that? Uh, did you put it in the end bag? I, I put it in the top oh, okay. bag and, and yeah. came around with three cushions. So That's right, yeah, yeah. OK, so I'm going to play the same shot. Wonderful. Didn't get quite on the pink hair you got on it. I think that's roundabout. No, you was here. Because I remember you playing that shot off that cushion and coming in here. All oh, right. Well, Do you remember the, that? I must have potted the blue into that corner then. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I came around with two cushions and tried to move the black. So now, obviously, it's just exhibition stuff now. You know you've won the World <laughs> Championships, and yeah, you're just right. waiting to... Yeah. You must be soaking up every moment this year. Yeah. Look at that. And that's exactly how it all went. And, then and you, you never missed a shot. And then you shook that? hands with a nugget. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant, yeah. mate, brilliant. Yeah. I remember watching his face, though, as he shook yeah. your hand. I could see we knew that you yeah. were the best player over the weekend, so... Yeah, over that over that week, you know, I played the best of the two, and, um, yeah, he, he took it really well. And then you got to do it again in 1987. Yeah, well, that was even scarier, really. <laughs> That's another story. But at least you had one in the bag. You yeah. never take it yeah. off you. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Thank Joe? you. Yeah. Top man, mate. Yeah, and you. Brilliant. Thanks yeah. for talking to us today. 30 yeah. years. Thank you. Brilliant, mate. Cheers.